Rob, your normal tour guide. This week we are painting the guy that helped create a dynasty and chop the legs off of his brother in the horse, Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is probably one of the minis I was most excited about painting when I heard the FFG was releasing the Clone Wars material. So uh, let's get uh, go ahead and get into it now. Now after priming our mini in white, let's go ahead and tackle his undergarment areas. And for that, we'll need some black, and I am using a Vallejo monocolor black. Uh, this color is just about the best black you can find in any of the, the hobby paints, and it has a really super clean finish to it. As always, please remember to thin your paints down with water or your favorite medium. Take your time, especially here while we're working around the white areas. And if you happen to have made any mistakes with that black paint, this is the best time to clean it up as we give the white areas a base coat. For all the armor sections, I'm using a Vallejo model color white gray. Remember that even though we are using a white color over a white color, it will probably still look like garbage at first. And it may take you a few coats to get it completed. Uh, as usual, you know when working with whites, don't rush it or this will really, really look horrible at the end. Now after cleaning up and basing with the white, let's go ahead and give the old hermit some color. Ewan, the screen actor, has a fairly light reddish brown hair, and though Vallejo model color orange brown is not you know, an exact match for him, I tend to use it for redheads in non-high fantasy settings. Now for Kenobi skin, you'll want to go ahead and use your favorite or go-to base color for miniatures that are of Caucasian colored. I tend to use the Vallejo model color beige red. Uh, it does a pretty good job or a decent job of mimicking, you know, us white people.
So we're going to go ahead and move on to the belt, and I wanted Kenobi to have a nice deep red color. Something like what uh, you would see his character wore in the movies uh, for his boots. Uh, Vallejo model color terracotta does a really good job at being a red leather. And I love how it looks on scabbards and belts especially. So as I paint off screen here, why don't you go ahead and get your minis built in order. Now what looks like Kenobi wearing a skirt is actually the bottom half of his Jedi robes. And most Jedi robes seem, or most Jedi seem to wear these off tan to brown robes. And to achieve that, uh, a color close to that, I went ahead and used uh, a Vallejo khaki color. Uh, you can use something similar if you felt like it. Should be noted here that model error and game color khakis are actually two different shades with the game color being the darker of the two, if I remember right. Now seeing as how our Kenobi is going to be all decked out in white armor, you probably want to avoid doing a normal all over shade of this guy. So trying to bring the main color back towards white afterwards is usually not a route I enjoy taking, so instead I'm going to do a 50-50 mix of Vallejo model color neutral gray and white gray. Uh, this is to keep it close to the primary color, but just slightly dark. And again folks, do not slather this on. You know, take your time and reset, recess shade the armor. You know, if you make any mistakes, clean your brush in the water, dab it, you know, dab the moisture off it on a towel, and then use what's left to remove your mistakes. So as with the armor, you know, I really didn't want to give the his robe a heavy shade either and, you know, be forced to bring it back up for the next hour or two. So instead, I'll be doing some line shading with the black ink here that's thinned down with, the, uh, with a little bit of water to make it less potent. And it'll require, you know, multiple applications. Just remember to use a thinner brush and aim for areas that look like they require some shade above and below the belt areas, uh, also the bottoms of the folds of the robes.
Now using some actual shade here, some Army Painter Mild Brown to be exact, we're going to give Kenobi's hair and face a little, let it dry or power dry it, and then give the hair, you know, some more, some more brown shade until you're happy with the results. While we let his hair and face dry, why not go ahead and start doing some highlights? Uh, I'll be starting off with the robes, doing uh, somewhere around a two to one mixture of khaki and Vallejo monocolor buff. I want to focus on the edges of the cloth, any high areas, and especially the, the folds of the cloth themselves. Now I'm gonna come back with 100% uh, Vallejo monocolor buff, go back over those areas to continue highlighting, uh, remembering to leave some of the previous color showing. If you're feeling a little spunky, you can go ahead and push those highlights just a little bit further. And for that, we'll use some Vallejo Model Air Sand Ivory, which is a pretty close approximation to the buff itself. So when in doubt in moderation, it won't be overly ex an extreme highlight. So some of you might have noticed by now that I painted Kenobi's saber, his saber hilt and his gloves black. Uh, if not, there is no time like the present, so go ahead and get those done. Now speaking of the hilt, grab your favorite dark metallic color, maybe some scale color thrash metal. In the movies, the hilt area, the hilt has an area of black and steel, uh, so if you're, you know, if you're feeling frogging, the base of the hand grip has an area of black as well as the top of the tube area. 
Uh, though, you know, I can't be really 100% for sure here. It looks like FFG created Kenobi's A New Hope version and not his Clone Wars version here. Uh, what do you think? Which, which, uh, which lightsaber do you think this looks like more? Now for the gloves, to give them a highlight, you can grab some German Grey by Vallejo and pick out his fingers. Then if you really felt like it, you could add in some, you know, like a dab of white or light gray and push those highlights a little bit further. So here, I don't know if I like this paint because it's good or that it was named after my favorite music scene. Heavy Metal by Skull Color. Use the lighter color metallic and pick out the ridges of the hilt, the top and bottom, then slide on over to his belt and color the buckle. Using some of Vallejo Game Color Dead White, let's go ahead and pick out areas of the armor that need a slight boosting. I use this on the top of the knees, uh, the calves, the part covering the inside of the ankles, as well as the wrist guards, shoulder pads, and forearms. Remember this is a boost uh, of the white and is not meant for complete coverage, so use this sparingly and only in areas that are upward facing or would be shining from the light. Now for the part I know we've all been waiting for, the Bleed of Jedi Master Kenobi. I know this is just a game and you can paint these things pretty much the way you want, but folks, this part is non-negotiable. Wanting to do something extremely translucent to allow the base white to kind of give this some extra pop, I wanted to, I decided to go ahead and try and use some blue ink. You're going to want to thin this down with a little bit of water, not too much though, just a tiny bit, and give it a, the blade a coat, and then let it dry for a minute or two. You know, unlike your normal paints, you really don't want to mess with this. So, um, while I sit, while I let this sit for a minute and then come back and give it an So while I let his saber dry for a minute or two, I will go ahead and attempt to screw up the emblem on his shoulder pad. So I'm going to use some light gray first and sketch out, you know, like a three-quarter circle that is slightly wider at the base and then draw a line straight down the middle of it. But the you want the line to sit a little bit proud of the circle on the top. So once I'm happy with the circle, I'll go ahead and grab me some flat red and then color in the lines. So, at first I was thinking this was supposed to be a phoenix symbol for some reason, so I gave it a little head. Uh, but then I looked at it again and realized it was supposed to be like this little starburst at the base of the line. Whoops. Well, oh well. I'm generally happy with this and honestly 99.9% .9 of the people will really not know I goofed unless if I say something. So it may not be G level canon, but I'm happy. So, you know, as I told you before, don't thin your ink down too much like I did. Uh, I put a little bit too much water on there and the thing was giving me some fits and I really couldn't get it to get to the color I wanted it to. So what I did was I added a little bit of like a brush tip or so of blue to the ink and then the color went pretty much straight on after that and thought it turned out pretty great. So after preparing the base to match the rest of my army, I went ahead and attached the mini and was sure to give him a matte coat for protection on the battlefield. Obi-Wan Kenobi from Fantasy Flight Games and the Star Wars Legion. 
I really enjoyed painting Kenobi, and other than the small emblem goof, I really liked how he turned out. What many are you most excited to paint next? Personally, I'm looking forward to Cad Bane and hopefully a Mace Windu in the near future. Below, you will find a list of all the paints used in this video, as well as links to my Patreon and PayPal if you wish to help support my channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and share to help my channel to continue to grow. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.